one and savage I'll be in the VIP smoking cabbage You can be my Cinderella after 12 be a vanish Amore, amore, tell you I tear that ass in Spanish Andale, 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 arriba Trying to find my mamacita Hola como estas baby, it's nice to meet ya Get you in the hotel, I'm with your bro It's a pleasure to have you here um, uh, I do a series that we call Self Made uh, it's all about uh, uh, talking to people that, who have made it, who have done things that are special, who have done it on their own. We wanted to dedicate our, our, our time to doing and showcasing people in the UK. And what I love about you is you're, you keep evolving, um, whether it's music, whether it's now your show, but you keep evolving. Um, I guess my first question is the name. Where does it come from? Ross Knott. My name came to me yeah, at a youth club on my bits. Now, I was performing at this show, and after I finished, <coughs> I can't remember if it was Bomber Clark Leon or one of my next brethren's, yeah, they were like, Raw, that's just nasty, fam. The way you're eating the mic, fam, like non stop, because fucking nasty, because sick, you showed it. Nasty, where I come from, meant good. It was an abbreviation for good. But I didn't want to be N-A-S-T-Y. I thought, raw. Well, maybe I had an acronym to it. So I put a meaning within the name. You get me? Yep. Natural, artistic, respected, sexy, talented, independent, and educated. You get me? And then from there, I just ran with it. The fact that I was big, black, and abusive as well, my name stood out for me. How old were you then? Um... 15, 16. You were emceeing in the club? Um, yeah, like a youth hall. Like a youth center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did, uh, did you want, when you were little, what did you want to be? All right, this is so fucked up now, yeah? Imagine, I didn't want to be a musician. I wanted to be a bombs disposalist or a sniper for the army. Why? Because I just wanted to be shooting from like a mile away. It's sick. Like Commando, Rambo. I really wanted to be a bombs disposalist or to be like a sniper in the army. Did you see something? Did you, a movie and an inspiration? I loved, all, I loved all the Rambo films and stuff like that. Then I got into the army cadets, got into the army cadets, Royal Logistic Corps, became a Lance Corporal, used to do shooting all the competitions, could hit a 25 pence, I could hit a 50 pence piece from 25 yards. So you actually yards. pursued it? Could actually shoot, you get me? I was doing shooting competitions, I was like, raw. This is sick. Imagine being in the fucking wilderness and that, just licking our head back. So get me, I'd love to do that. Boom, got in army cadets. So tell me about the music side. So when did music all of a sudden become important for you? Now, this is a true story, yeah? My first stage when I said I'm gonna start doing music, yeah? I used to sit on the block with a Tesco bag full of drawers, yeah? My Happy Shopper 30 P Lemonade and my Custard Creams, yeah? and a whole Tesco bags full of eight balls, yeah? And my lyric book, and I used to sit on the stoop, yeah? Just serving and writing bars. You'd write everything? Yeah, just write everything. But I didn't know bars, in it, So yeah. I'd just write two pages. So, sitting there, just writing, just writing, just writing. Boom. One time, yeah, I think some of them said, going raw. Man, I think nasty smoking crack, you know? Cause he's talking about he want to be a music man, but like he want to do music. I swear them and they're smoking food, you know. Because at the time when I started to get into music, being a musician wasn't cool. Like mm. a DJ was cool, because mm -hmm. a DJ's getting pussy and he's getting money. Mm -hmm. Talking about being a rapper and stuff, you got some tight little thin gold chain around your neck, driving a Metro, dead. No other ones there, nothing ain't going for them man there. So it was like, whoa, where and where I was at, I'm making good money for my age. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of 14, 15 year olds are making what I'm making, man. Like, why the fuck are you gonna do music and go to that no respect? Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just couldn't fathom it. But the writing of the music was my little getaway. Do you get what I mean? To write my truest thoughts on paper and not be judged. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Saying something out like, raw, how you feel, to spit it on a beat is totally different. So you could say the, the exact same words, but because one is on a, on a beat and one is a cappella with no beat, 
you hear the density in what's going on. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And <coughs> truth be told, I liked it. And I had a lot of pain, a lot of rage, a lot of anger. And the music was something I thought I could vent. On the lyric side, you could get it out. I could get it all Did out. Did you think you could sing? I always thought I could sing. I always thought I could sing. So what, did you think at the time, I, I can do both, or one was better than the other? I was about to gal them, cause, so I, if I could have been Jenny Wine cause, yeah, and sing Pony, cause that, that, I would have done that over rapping any day. Cause, you get me? If you're on it, let's do it. You know what I was there? Until yeah. the mighty day when your balls drop. Yeah. I just woke up one day and I had loads of bass. And my voice was just deeper. It's like, yeah, walk one. <laughs> you know what I was there? And I was like, raw, singing ain't really gonna work anymore. And I remember at that time, Singing, rapping, what, what what people do now, that was very highly frowned upon. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That was highly, highly frowned upon. So, goes back to the saying: the person with the most information wins. We're coming from. You got to look. England, our closest representation to music is reggae and hip hop. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Being a black kid from England, I look at hip-hop and my ancestral heritage which is jamaica do you get what i mean yep so on a normal sunday where people was watching eastenders or coronation street one of my aunties or uncles would come back from jamaica and bought merciless versus ninja man do you get what mm -hmm. i mean cocker tea versus super cat like that was our highlight do you get what i mean mm -hmm. I wore a Japanese bandana because Ninja Man did that. I wore travel foxes and ballets because Supercat done that. You get me? I wore click suits because Buju done that. Sure. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So then, raw. I like jewelry because Biggie had jewelry. Tupac had jewelry. Do you get what I mean? It's it's the closest. You're I, emulating the culture. What's closest to yeah. me? Yeah. So there's a stage every. Artist in England used to rap with an American voice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Because they didn't know their culture enough to, to rap in their own voice. The, the closest thing what they thought was sick and nice is what we was hearing from America. Yeah. So, time, a mixture of that with my Jamaican heritage just started to form. Do, do, what was the first song that you put out that you that people reacted to, wow, this guy's... It wasn't even a song. Imagine this now. Going back to my lyric books here, yeah, me um, used to write in two pages. My community project called Raw Materials, yeah, gave me my first ever deal, which was 10,000 blank CDs. They would print for you? Yeah, no, what well, they gave to man. Okay. That's all, they just gave me 10,000 blank CDs, yeah? My DJ Suicide, yeah, did a mixture of all different instrumentals for like 45 minutes and I rapped all over it. That CD went through Brixton like wildfire. Now that I, I was doing something that was constructive and half decent, it was a positive recognition more than that guy, that them man there. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Did you think you were only popular in Brixton? Yeah. When did you realize kind of people heard you outside? Um, but for a long time, it was only... Because this is, this is before social media. Yeah. You can't but, just put a song out. And this is what I'm saying though, but see this... Uh, prime example, the way to describe it is, the stuff I was spitting wasn't meant for the world. It's a bit like the Chirac thing. Little Keith, Chief Keith stuff and that, wasn't meant for the public. Yeah. It was meant for their own. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So the stuff I'm talking about and the banging what I'm doing in Brixton, my songs was only meant for man in Brixton who's living the life. If you're banging and doing what we're doing, you will know the words what I'm saying. You the, You wouldn't get it. Do you get what I'm yeah. trying to say? So it wasn't meant for everyone to get. It was for man who were banging in Brixton. But like anything, if something's good, it will find out. But then remember, you know, everyone's got family. So I'm from Brixton, yeah, but I've got cousins in Lucian, I've got 
cousins all over the place. So have you. So your cousin, who, who's come to your house, you've told him, right, this is the guy who's popular in my area. He's taken the, the CD. He's brought it over to North, North London. The CD's ended up in East London. I'm going to jump straight ahead. How did the show come about? No. Boom. So this comes through the music. For long, I'm doing my music. It's getting there. It's having its thing. I'm stuck in this underground bubble. As soon as I showed the world my personality, connected to me, I'm saying to myself, why am I getting 100,000 views for smoking weed in my car and talking? Mm. But I'm only getting 20,000 views for my song. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. My boy Ledge is like, because you're not intertwining your personality with your music. Your mm -hmm. music, you're only showing them one side of you, not all of you. And they're not going to get it like that. You've got to show them all of you. For long, I'm thinking, what the fuck is Ledge talking about? But Uncle Payne's just start to pick up and do really well. Then there was a scene now, and then there was an artist called Nathan. He was a big singer, went to America, did all of this stuff. He ended up going to prison for fraud, for scamming some old elderly woman, shit like that. But he's saying, well, oh, radio just gave up on him, stopped playing his music, all of this stuff. I did a reaction video to that with no top on cooking an egg. But I said something, and first time I've ever said it, I was like, bro, all my fans out there who rate my music and like me and that, if you don't want to see me back on the road fucking selling drugs and doing mad stuff and that, start phoning radio and telling them to play my music for because mm. that's where I'm going to end up. Mm -hmm. Wow, what told me to fucking do that? Next day, BBC Radio 1, 2,000 phone calls, wow. play that fat cunt's music. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So the ball dropped to myself. I said, raw, I've had nearly 10,000 soldiers and I've never given them a command. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've never, ever given them a command. So just an analogy is DJ Khaled. So to me, to those who never knew Khaled, Khaled's the same person he was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's just social media has now has a chance to see his personality. Mm. To me, it's, it's like what you're saying. Your personality is now for the world to see. Do you get me? And I had to wait for my time. I had to wait for that to happen. Yeah. For me to blow. So I've seen the show, and I wouldn't know anybody besides Ed Sheeran as an example. I wouldn't know who is on it, but I, my wife and I were watching it. But it's because of your. Uh, your energy that you're giving and the honesty that you're giving, it, it's very real. It's fun to watch. And I had to meet TV like that. It's like, every time I lie in my bed and I watch TV, none of that represents the, the, the world I actually live in. Mm. Do you get what I mean? It's like, worlds within the world. You know what I mean. It's like, the songs they play on radio is not the songs that you play in your car. Because you have control of your orcs lead. Did you think the show would be successful? Um, yeah and no. I thought, yeah, in the sense of that it's the first of its kind. I, I, I said it's going to be the blackest thing on TV England's ever seen. But two, would England allow that though? Do you get what I mean? Remember, no. What I've found out to learn with industry antics, yeah, they don't mind you coming in and making some money, but when you start to change things, this is where people have a problem. Yeah. And unfortunately, the money what I've come to make is life-changing. <laughs> Do you get what I yeah. mean? So people are going to have a problem with that. Because it, if I was just taking a fat bag home, that's one thing. I'm changing people's mentalities. I'm changing the way people are thinking. That's what they don't want now. That's a problem. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So that makes the journey a bit harder. The fact that man is having such a, of a, a powerful influence over people. Is the do, you, do you know if the audience, has the audience changed? Both who comes in house and who's watching it? 
It's mad. My my TV show has the highest black audience ever on TV. Do you get what I mean? Like, you would never see so much black people in the audience on TV ever. You would definitely see that on the right stuff. You wouldn't see that on Graham Norton, Jonathan Ross, because they don't fit that demeanor. Yeah. And it's not them anyway. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So, it's mad. Are you proud of that? I'm definitely proud of it because I've set, I've set, um, boundaries and I've set um, like a good goalpost but with great power comes great responsibility. Mm. So what's next for you? What do you see as the next uh, accomplishment, next thing you want to conquer? Boy, right now, the TV came early. The TV was supposed to be my pension plan. <laughs> you get me? Yeah. When I'm like in my late 50s, like ch -ch -ch, bang some TV. You get me? Definitely gonna do some porno videos. <laughs> <laughs> do you have the name of the video? Uh, got a title? Black Dirt Diggler. <laughs> no, no one there. <laughs> do old school boogie nights. No, no one's there. You gotta have a roller girl. You know, oh shit. No, my roller girl's gonna have a lot of ass. <laughs> a lot of ass. Um, but yeah, more music. Well, more so music, music is gonna definitely come. Music's my first passion. Yeah, so you're not, you, that's gonna stay. You're not giving up. 100%. Music's definitely my first passion. The TV stuff. You finished the second season? Yeah, I got one more show. You get me? The TV stuff, truth be told, is something I can do. It's easy. It, it doesn't take away from what I am, if it makes sense. Like, I'm, like, how I've started my whole journey, there's two parts to me. Some people just love my personality and some people love my music. Some people don't watch my show, they just listen to my music. Some people like the show. So it's a, it's, a, it's a balance of two, and I'm not going to put one part of me over the other. It's just a full package, do you know what I mean? And what's worked for me so far is just being myself. Do you know what it is? Anything done with an alter ego is what you have to keep up with. Yeah. I smoke too much weed for that shit, big man. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? I don't want to be always looking after the last word I said to make sure it's implied with the yeah. image I'm trying to portray. Yeah. I'm a Ross Clark G, and that's what it is, fam. Man just does real things, say it what way it is, keep it true. Do you get me? With that method, the world's my oyster. Do you get me? Yeah. Who, uh, can you say who's on the, sh on the second season? Um, I've had fucking um, Rio Ferdinand, Jimmy Carr. Um, we've got Tory Lanez on the last show. Um, Bare people, blood. Steve or the man, 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 like hacks. Who's your favorite guest so, so far? Ross from Friends. Why? Because you love Friends? Yeah, bro. I love Friends. My sandwich? No. <laughs> That's Joey's favorite food. Come on. <laughs> That's sick, man. Really? Were you, uh, that was the first time you met him on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and That's because you're a fan. And t yeah, and Tandy Newton. Yeah. She's a lovely woman. Yeah. She, she got Ross to come on my show. She came on my show and put in a good word. Who do you want to interview? Um, I would love to get like, definitely get Jay-Z on the show, that'd be gassed. Yeah. Yeah, man. I know someone who'd be so sick as well, Who? Samuel Jackson. Yeah, I agree. I would just love to, I'd love to hear him say motherfucker. I would exactly. Love to, read, yeah. his, read his kid's book too. Yeah. He's got a kid's book. He's got, uh, isn't it every word he says is motherfucker in it? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, like a kid's book. My G. He's a fucking G. Do you get me? Yeah. Yeah, man. Right now, life, I want to experience it all, fam. So you were telling me earlier, uh, you're going to do MMA? Yeah, I got my first um, mixed martial arts fight, hopefully, in October. You get me? Can't wait. Can't Are you train it. every day you're training? I train five days a week. You get me? So whoever you fight, what do they have to look out for? The, 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 the leg or the kick or the, the fist? Boy, ooh, I hope I don't grab you. I'm learning guerrilla jiu-jitsu, shiru back. Grab joints and twist them the other way. No the one there. How 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 long have you been training for this? Um, over a year now. I'm conditioning my shins, nearly broke my shins. You get me? Can't fall for You like it? Things. You like the experience? I'm in a domestic relationship. I keep going back and I keep crying in my car. So <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, and it hurts and I keep going back. Because you like the abuse. I like the abuse. You like it, so it's marriage. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, but I think 
especially coming from road, yeah, not see the difference between street, yeah? The music industry and the TV industry is a lot like street with a less a lot less punching in the face. You see my word on the road, yeah? You have to carry your word. So if I said to you, Ra, big man, I'm going to represent your drink. That's what I'm going to do. You, you know just want to give it at all. You want to do it. Yeah, because I gave my word to yeah. it. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? These TV motherfuckers, their word is not bond. Do you get what I mean? So they break their words a lot, but with no repercussions. Do you get what I mean? So it's mad. You have to have a street aspect of looking at things, but it's corporate. Hence why I just keep... I keep it lone wolf. Do you get what I mean? Because you know that's not normal. Never, but I'm, truth be told, I'm not supposed to be in the industry. My, my fan base has made me in the industry. Sure. And my cult, my cult following has made me in the industry. My ethics of life and morals and how I see things is definitely not industry based, yeah. no. Well, I, I'll say and I'll end on that note, which to me is very special, is... It's, to me, it's that idea of being self-made. You're doing it your own way and you're committing to who you are yeah. and you don't want to change it because you have, it, you believe in it, your fans believe in it, your family believes in it and they believe in you. Of course, bignasty.com, t-shirts, CBD products, the shebang. Let's do it. Cheers, thank you. Thanks for having us, having you on. Thank My you. Geez. I don't want no problem. We gon' do this to the Miyano. Sleepless, listening to Nirvana. She want blonde, ain't a banana. Girl, I know.